Hello, today we're going to talk about for each loops. So for each loops are a tool that you can use to iterate over an array. You can also iterate over objects, but we're only going to talk about arrays today. Um, so for each loops make this as easy as it can be. I highly recommend them. Um, they're kind of like for loops as opposed to while loops. Difference being, I mean, I teach a lot of introduction to programming. I don't make people use for loops. If people want to use while loops for standard iteration, I think that's fine. At the point where you program every day, you might start to use for loops, but right, it's kind of unnecessary. It's shorthand. It's more efficient. Some people like it, but it's not like essential to use for loops instead of while loops. But when we're talking for each loops to iterate over arrays versus a while loop, I think you should use for each loops. So let me show you how those work. So to best understand this, I'm going to do this first using a while loop and show you kind of how that works and why it's painful. And then I'll contrast that with a for each loop. So I've got uh, an indexed array here and an associative array here, indexed, meaning my keys are numeric here. My keys are strings. So if I want, let's say I want to iterate over months, which is an indexed array. So I'm going to need a counter for this and I'm going to initialize it to zero because the first index position is zero. Then I'm going to create a while loop. And I always put the structure of my things together before I do the contents. So I'm going to increment that counter. So I have to create a counter, initialize my counter, uh, increment my counter. And here's going to be my conditional statement, something like when uh, while i is less than the count of the array, which is like the, the length of the array. That's just what it looks like. That's what it looks like when you iterate over an array. Very common thing to do. Start at the beginning, go to the end, keep have a counter, keep track of it. And let's say that I want to echo out months, um, position, I. Right? If you're not following this, this isn't the best first programming video to watch. But basically, uh, echo out the thing, the value in the position of the counter, which is initially zero. And that'll become one, and then you'll print out spot one, then spot two, then spot three, until you get to spot 11. And then when, when I gets up to 12, that won't be less than 12, and it'll bail out. And I will show you this. Oh, terrible, right? I meant to put line breaks in there, but you see it did what it did. Was that terribly painful? No. Um, easy enough to follow, I guess. That's a while loop. Let me show you what that looks like as a for each loop. Now, if you that's what you want to do, go ahead. No one's going to tell you it's wrong. I'm not going to tell you it's wrong. I'm just going to show you that they got these things called for each loops, which are shorthand, and they, they, they're they perfect tool for what we need to do here. So let's say we want to iterate over that same uh, array. And so in a for each loop, I don't have to deal with a counter. If you think about arrays, it's very common to start at the beginning and go to the end, right? And I, we don't usually know how long it is, but we know it starts in spot zero. So for each is our magic word. That's kind of built off of the idea of a for loop. It's just a special kind. And so the syntax looks like, so the first thing you pass it, or it's not exactly a function, but uh, you want to pass it uh, the name of the array that you want to iterate over and then keyword as. And then, so if this is an indexed array, there's two ways we can do this. I'm gonna do way one and way two. This is way one. I guess the normal way you do this is like is like that. Now, months is the name of an array. That's a keyword. I can't change that. That's a keyword. I can't change that. That right there, I can call it whatever you wanna call it. It represents, in terms of like key value pairs, that's a value. So calling it value makes a lot of sense. I am lazy, so I usually call it val, but I'm gonna call it value today. And notice I don't even have any reference to a counter. That's that'll take me through it. That'll iterate through this array called months. And all of the and the each value as it is visited will be referred to as value. So I can do this echo value. That right there is equivalent to that right there. So in contrasting them, you notice I'm not even maintaining a counter here. I don't need to declare a counter. I don't need to initialize a counter. I don't have to write a conditional statement here, something about when it gets to the size of the array. I don't have to increment the array. And here on this print, where I had to like specify that I wanted to print out a particular position, this represents the current position. Just notice how much easier that is. This is a very common thing to do. And sometimes you're not printing it. Sometimes you're you know, putting it in a table or inserting it in a database or something. But uh, 
everything that you'd want to do is done right there. Now I'll show you, I will save this, I will refresh it, and I think it's going to look exactly the same because it's different code, but same output. Really nice, right? And so the trade-off is between like a, a while loop and a for loop is for loops are if you don't know about programming, you would look at this and you'd go, I have no idea what that is, right? It's not easy to look at, but it certainly does exactly what we want it to do. So I'm going to call this um, method one for using a for each loop. So this is going to get you the, the values. Notice that there's no real way for me to get the keys out of that. Now, in an associative array where you probably would care about the keys, I mean, you might care about the keys here too. I mean, the key's zero, it's not interesting, but you might want to know what it is. Um, if I want to get the keys and the values, then this is going to be the second way of doing it. All right, so let's say I want to iterate over messy months and display the key value pairs. Actually, I'll do it on months and then messy months. It's still a for each loop. It's just going to be the way I set it up. It's going to be a little different. I want to iterate over that same uh, array called months. Let me block comment this out because I don't want to deal with it. And instead of just the as value, it's as key and then that operator and then value. So you see the difference is a little messier. Instead of just value, we've got as key value. So that's going to represent the current key. That's going to represent the current value. And then I can do something like this. Echo, it's going to be a string. Um, key, colon, value. And if you want to make this less ugly to look at, you can put a line break in there. And you'll see this allows me to extract not only the values, but also the keys. So depending on whether you care about the keys or not, you're going to do that or that. I don't know. I think there's a lot of times where I care about those values, but this is a good one too. And I run it. And you see there's my key, there's my value. There's my key, there's my value. Like I said, these keys aren't, they don't tell us anything like an associative key might, but uh, they do tell you what's in a various index position, which is valuable because sometimes your index positions are off. Um, and if I want to make that into messy months, I don't know. It's, I guess it's cooler. It's the same thing. But this is going to give us right, the, the key value pairs. So you got two ways of doing for each loops. One just gives you the values. One gives you the keys and the values. You might think this one's just superior. And I guess it is. But if you don't care about the keys, then you don't need to do it. But the moral of this story is look at how much it simplifies what you would do manually. Now, you're welcome to do this. But if you don't want to mess up your counters and have to make some reference to the size of the thing that you're iterating over, then for eaches are good for you. Now, the other th reason why for eaches are real good for you is that when you are echoing out a reference to a position in an array, that's not the easiest thing to echo. You can echo it like that, but at the point where you want that to be a string like, uh, like that, that, you're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to index into an array inside of an echo. And so you have to start doing things like concatenation which is fine. That looks wrong based on my colors, but I don't see why it's wrong. Uh, I'm attempting to do concatenation. I think I have a typo, but I don't really care to fix it. Or because I don't actually really want to do that. You can also wrap that thing in curly braces. So those of you that have printed out arrays before, you know what I'm talking about. If you're going to index into an array, you're not allowed to do that in an echo. Whereas in these for each loops, since you're not indexing into an array, you're allowed to go straight at the key and the value. So yet another reason why those are uh, valuable to you. So that's how you use for each loops in PHP. You got two ways of doing it. Uh, this is fine too, but as you can see, this greatly simplifies it. And sure, it's not very readable, but uh, I mean, if, you have, if you've never seen these before, but it's super helpful. So I recommend it. Thanks for watching.